that to be? I think the hand of God is clear. Who are his competitors? Who are rivals to him? So, if somebody like Putobi, with his background of integrity, with his background of knowledge, a background of education, with background of studying what has succeeded in other parts of the world. If somebody like him becomes president, Nigeria arrives and development will be not just a matter of a gradual process, it will be exponential development in Nigeria. Which candidate can you compare Mr. Peter Obi with? Which candidate is Mr. Peter Obi's rival? In terms of integrity, in terms of capacity, in terms of empathy for the people, in terms of willingness to do the job, which presidential candidate can you compare with Mr. Peter Obi? This is someone who has a track record that people can look back to. This is somebody who has done it before and is willing to do it again for Nigeria. So guys, when I see some Nigerians, especially the youths following Tinubu and following Atiku, sometimes I just end up saying these people, they don't even want Nigeria to be better. These are not patriotic Nigerians. Is that like if it will be in place? It will be bad by to be a friend as as a, a physical something, maybe in the mind. And within a year, you can have Biafra. The kind of Biafra a world of war had in uh, Yoruba land. The kind of Biafra war I had in Igbo land. Huh? If the, so guys, this is the only Igbo man that has come out to endorse Mr. Peter Obi right from the onset. He has always stood for Mr. Peter Obi while other Igbo governors are staying back, protecting the interests of their party and not the interests of Nigeria, neither the interests of Nigerians. They are just there to stand for their party even when they see that their candidate is sick, their candidate is weak. They will still want to see that he should be the one to oversee the affairs of Nigeria after the election. So guys, I don't know. When you look at Mr. Peter Obi, you know that Mr. Peter Obi is somebody who is willing to work. He just wants to come and leave some blueprint behind so that people can follow it and get Nigeria to a new level. So guys, I want you to listen to this interview, you know. I want you to listen to this interview with Professor Ezife. You are going to enjoy it. And I must say kudos to you, Professor Ezife, for standing firm for the truth. You have always stood for Mr. Peter Obi, you have always believed in him. You've always trusted that what he did in Anambra State, he can replicate it and even better in Nigeria. Unlike the Ohaneze Indibo and their leaders who are not even coming out to show support for Mr. Peter Obi, you know, because of their allegiance to the governor of Imo State, you can see that they are not bold to come out to endorse Mr. Peter Obi. They are endorsing Mr. Peter Obi behind, you know. We've not seen them come out to say, yes, Mr. Peter Obi, we are behind you. You know, we don't see that. Yes, because we all know that Peter Obi's presidency is not dependent on the Ibo. Honestly, it is not the Igbos that is driving Mr. Peter Obi's presidency. I tell you, Mr. Peter Obi's presidency is being driven by the youth, by the obedient family. So we are not depending on the Igbos, you know. We don't even need their endorsement. Whether they endorse Mr. Peter Obi or not, I want to assure you guys that Mr. Peter Obi already has his 25% from every southeastern state. So it does not even bother me whether they come out to to endorse him or not, I want to tell you that Mr. Peter Obi is a God's project. God has raised this project to use it to bring Nigeria to another level. And the youth are the one piloting these jets. I tell you, Mr. Peter Obi is going to win this election. And you know, all those who are scared of endorsing him, they will be put to shame. You know, they are shame to come out. The Igbos, the Igbos, the Igbo chieftains, they are afraid to come out and endorse Mr. Peter Obi. 
Obi. And I tell you, the support for Mr. Peter Obi keep growing day by day. And I tell you, no doubt, Mr. Peter Obi is going to win this election. So guys, let me allow you listen to this interview and let me know what you think in the comment section. Please, if you are an obedient out there, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please turn on the notification bell so that each time I upload a new video, you will be notified. And don't forget to give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about this interview in the comment section below. Thank you and God bless you. Just like if it will be in place, it will be bad by to be a friend as, as a, a physical something. Maybe in the mind. And within a year, you can have Biafra. The kind of Biafra a World of War had in uh, Yoruba land. The kind of Biafra what Mara had in Igbo land. Huh? If we organize ourselves, restructure well, then you can have virtually independent groups and all of them careful and mindful and defending their own territorial integrity and not allow a governor to go to capital, take a location and blow it. In the past, during the early days of Nigeria, during the regional government, you must ask the governor what he has done with your money. Not uh, like today, People just get money and chop. So, um, I think if we look deeply, we will see the hand of God in what is happening. Well, with regard to me, I think the hand of God is clear. Who are his competitors? Who are rivals to him? So, if someone like Putobi, with his background of integrity, with his background of knowledge, his background of education, with background of studying what has succeeded in other parts of the world, if somebody like him becomes president, Nigeria arrives. And development will be not just a matter of a, a gradual process. It will be exponential development in Nigeria. And within two years, all those are in America, my sons and daughters and uh, your sons and daughters are in America and uh, UK, in uh, us of Nigeria, they will begin to think about home. And if they come home with their brilliant industrial knowledge, <laughs> end of unemployment. If, well, but actually Nigerians know it, that um, people from the Southeast are industrialists, are developers as success destined. That's a gift of God to them. But the problem we have, I'm, I'm sorry, I must say it. I'm sorry Paul Onongo is dead. Paul Onongo educated me. For some reason, he moved out I came to my house and we lived for three months. And uh, one night I asked Paul Nungu, why do the Igbos not, are not well accepted everywhere in Nigeria? He looked at me and said, I will tell you the truth, the whole truth. I was happy. And this is what he told me. Igbo man will come to a village, he doesn't know, doesn't have any connection, without money, empty handed virtually, and then begins to do some small thing 
by the side. But in a few months, years, he builds a palatial house. He turned around and told, asked me, is that his fault? I said, you tell me. It's not his fault. He said, but now listen. Then he said to me, while he's talking with his friends, a TV man is passing through in front of the compound. And the woman shouts and said, I know that fool. I met him the day I arrived here. And up to now, he has not built a chicken house, Mbokuko. Then he turns around and says to me, if we were that man and you heard him say it, what would you feel? I said, I will hate him. I will hate him. He said, okay. You've got to answer to your question. I said, yes, you are right. If what you are saying is true. But then it was shown to me that what he was saying was true. I'm sorry we have lost a gem to man, a very uh, forthright person, Paul Onongo, a TV man. He taught me the problem of Igbo. I have been fighting that, but I have not succeeded at all. It's not even just um, anywhere. Look at South Africa. Our men, women, South African women just want Igbo to marry them. If we just marry them, I keep quiet. But if we marry them and then make a noise to the South African men, they begin to hurt you. So loud mouthedness is our problem. And we must learn to be diplomatic and tactful. Huh? And very soon, Nigerians will know that they have no problem. The people will keep making progress. But not because of anybody in Azorok, no. We want only level playing field. Please, if you are an obedient out there, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please turn on the notification bell so that each time I upload a new video, you will be notified. And don't forget to give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about this interview in the comment section below. Thank you and God bless you.